Yes, so welcome to Hadith session of Quick with uh, Show and Tell. And for our session today, uh, we'll be talking about our new cluster membership management system that is built using a scuttlebot algorithm. And obviously, uh, since QuickWit is built in Rust, so we are all doing it in, in Rust. So what is cluster membership management, you might say? Uh, it's currently a subsystem for just managing a fleet of application nodes. Like you have a bunch of nodes probably running on bare bone servers or in Kubernetes pods. And the way we kind of manage all those nodes is what our cluster management system is is about. And do we why do we need it? We need it to provide uh, horizontal scalability. If you take QuickWit, for instance, we provide a distributed search. So how a search search a service needs this functionality because we have many nodes and they need to work together to provide the, the functionality that is expected from our users. And you, we also it also provides knowledge about node and what they can offer. Probably a node, what uh, the different index file it has, what are the disks available, and even the job that are assigned to them, what's the progress of those. So these are important for, for us as well. And the, the cluster membership should also provide failure detection and with all this information, this is useful also for client libraries. Maybe uh, you want to do uh, client side load balancing. So having a uh, cluster membership information is also important for, for using those kind of, for doing those kind of stuff. So uh, as you, if you have been using QuickWit, you probably know that we already have uh, an implementation of cluster management inside and we use swim but uh, the the reason we are introducing today scuttlebot is that we are moving away from swim swim which is stands for scalable, scalable weekly consistent infection style process group membership protocol uh, the pros is that uh, with swim is uh, it's a gossip based protocol and it is fast type you compare to what we will introduce next and because it uses dissemination, also uh, called remote mongering. And this way of doing gossip is faster because uh, if I take a real world example, let's say there is a hot news in town and I just get to read it in the newspaper and I decide, oh, I need to inform all those people I know that about this news, then I start calling them. And next, those people also decide to inform those people they know that the redisted news is is going, uh, in, is going about in town. So this information gets spread very quickly because of the way it's it it works. The pattern is, and it's almost like the way this is kind of spread, or the way when there is a, a fire in the forest, the way it works. So some people even refer to it as. Uh, as that but the problem with this is it has some probability uh, thing inside because the uh, the more i will keep spreading the news for instance if i can still use my example is uh, at some point uh, one of those people i called might call another person and say hey there is this news in time and with the person might end up saying oh i already knew about it so uh, as people start uh, backfiring with that response, people start losing interest on it. And there might be a couple of people in town that are not aware of it, but nobody will care about informing them. So there is this probability that some people might not get, even though it's very slim, but there is this probability that exists that people might not get that news. So that's the problem about swim and you need to have that mathematical background and then be able to make sure that the node it spreads quickly but it also makes sure to get it to everyone and uh, it is implemented in HashiCorp product called surf and i think they also use it in other uh, other products uh, the cons is it's hard to implement and get the implementation correct just as i said because of that mathematical background and we found out that real world implementation often come with their own extension like um, 
HashiCorp uh, extended it with LifeGuards and we found that there are a lot of implementation. Uh, if you take, take for instance, Terran tool implementation, they also had to complete it with uh, the, the kind of style of gossip we will talk about next, um, which is kind of just lo looks weird if you, you have an algorithm and, and then you have to complete with so, something else. So we will talk about those, those details later. And the current implementation we we use that we found that that's the best Rust implementation was Altiori, but to be honest, this doesn't give us the the level of confidence we needed, and that's why we started looking for alternatives. And that alter alternative we found was Scuttlebot. The paper is uh, titled "Efficient Reconciliation and Flow Control for Anti-Entropy Protocol." And the pros for us wa was that it's easier to understand and implement, uh, particularly for me if it doesn't involve mathematics or, or a lot of heuristic, uh, it's, it's really good for me. And it's already used in notable systems such as Apache Cassandra, which itself borrows it from uh, Dynamo uh, DB. And the nice thing about Scuttlebot is uh, it it nicely shares data across the cluster. Node can share data with each one another uh, using the same without ex any extension, without uh, any any new feature introduced. So just like the, the normal way the, the protocol works, you can share things like service port the a particular node is offering, uh, available disk resources or any other things, which is good for us because we are doing distributed search and we probably need some time for caching or for be better, better work scheduling. We need those kind of information. Uh, the cons is like um, it's a gossip based protocol that is slower than the previous one we, uh, we talked about uh, in SWIM. Uh, this one uses anti-entropy and the way it works is if I have to take again the example uh, of the hot news then instead of uh, this time uh, sending the calling all those people I know and telling them about the news I will just decide to randomly pick one of the person I know and talk to him about as you can see the number from all of the contact to, to one, one of my contacts is already reduced so the way the news will spread is very uh, is slower than the, the previous one but uh, the good thing is this one will keep bouncing back until at least all the cluster eventually get all the information uh, that, that we are talking about so how scuttlebot works uh, in scuttlebot a node keeps a map of node IDs to node state. So uh, a, a single cluster, uh, a single cluster state is comprised of all the nodes that are in, inside those clusters, their IDs, and each IDs to each IDs we correspond a map in which we have like uh, key value pairs. Where we usually these key value pairs are versions, and we have key value pairs related to 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 that particular node. So. Uh, the nice thing is a node is only allowed to modify its own state so we don't need to deal with uh, conflict resolution of about oh, which one modified which one and a node can also share any other nodes state so this means if for instance a node A receive uh, an update from node C it can pass that information that update from node C around to other nodes saying that hey this is what I got from node C do you have it if you don't have it then make sure you you register it and with this uh, node eventually get all the cluster state via sharing or gossiping via this anti-entropy gossiping so how does close uh, scuttlebot gossip uh, for the case of scuttlebot implementation, it is usually every second, but you can you are all, always allowed to uh, to tweak it in millisecond or even more uh, fine grain. This uh, affects the the frequency of, of you of gossip def def definitely affect the, your propagation speed. So it's it's really good to experiment for your use case. But right now we do it every second. A node randomly selects a few nodes instead of just one 
and and then we make sure to make things smarter we make sure to include a random uh, random uh, node that is one of the seed if it is not included already and then we also randomly include a dead node just in case if it is back online we can we can catch him up so uh, with and just as i said the gossy frequency and the number of nodes directly uh, that you select directly affects the propagation speed and for a particular gossip what a gossip round is made of so in this particular schema you have uh, node a uh, on the left in blue and node b on the right and uh, node a is uh, the one initiating here the um, uh, the gossip so it starts the gossip by uh, first computing a digest a digest is like uh, the a summary of the the cluster state it has so each node holds uh, the what it knows about the cluster which is the cluster state from its perspective and uh, it computes the digest the digest will be uh, for this no inside this cluster state we have each node and the different key value pairs so and aside it these key value pairs as i said previously are version so you have a maximum version of it so a digest is more like the node id and the corresponding uh, maximum version of for that state for that particular node id and once you pack all of them that makes up the digest so node a will uh, compute its digest that is uh, what it thinks of the summary of what it has and then it sends a scene message com uh, containing that digest to node b when node b receives that uh, that message uh, it's computes the delta like that is the difference of what it thinks node a doesn't have from from node b uh, using the digest from a so using that summary it is able to figure out oh what what i have that node b node a doesn't have and then once it computes that delta it also computes its own digest and then it replies node a with a scene arc embedding its digest b it computed and then the delta it also computed so as soon as uh, node a received that reply and it's it has the delta and it applies the delta because that's what node b b is saying that this is what you don't have right now so it applies that differences and then it computes its own digest uh, it computes another delta which is using the the digest node b sent back so when node b sent back a digest he, he, when node b sends back a digest here it's going to compute another delta which is the delta node a currently thinks node b doesn't have so it's just finally sent an acknowledgement message with that delta and then once that message get to node b and then you have uh, node b just have to apply that differences so it might look a bit intimidating first but it's really simple first of all you compute the digest that digest gets sent here and then with a message scene once node a b use a uh, sees that scene message it computes the delta using that digest and then it computes its own delta is computes its own digest send back those information back um, node a picks that delta applies it and then computes a delta using that new digest from b and then send back a delta so that that delta can be applied here so that's uh, quickly an, uh, an explanation of uh, uh, a scuttlebutt gossip round next uh, what about this is quite easy right but what about faulty node or slow nodes uh, in most distributed system node gets their present notice via heartbeat so scuttlebot is no exception it does heartbeats even it might not looks uh, uh, it, it might not be obvious uh, on the first uh, at first sight it does heartbeat via uh, direct heartbeats for instance between node a and node b when node a gossip directly with node b uh, there is a, a heart this is kind of like a heartbeat and indirectly uh, for instance between b and c when node a uh, node a is gossiping with node b node a could probably shares uh, share node c latest state 
so when node a while gossiping with b shares node c state so because uh, node a uh, is sharing node c state node b is sharing node c state with a then you kind of have um you kind of have an indirect gossip between b and c because obviously b and c are not talking directly but b and c are, to are talking via node a so this is also called uh, this is also a, uh, a hard bit that we need to consider that hey uh, c is still alive in scuttlebot uh, when a node stops sharing updates its state is just left alone so this raises few questions how can we get the list of live dead nodes in the cluster uh, when can we confidently mark a node as dead and the solution could easily be uh, deciding on a timeout probably uh, when that timeout is reached uh, and a node has not reported a hard bit we decide that we mark that node as down but uh, this is almost like uh, deciding okay uh, and it's it usually gets gets you a lot of fal false positive so we need to be smarter than that and this is where we introduce fee accrual error detection algorithm and which is another paper that uh, we uh, that fits nicely inside a uh, scuttlebot implementation this algorithm calculates the five value based on a window of recently received heartbeat intervals so uh, this nicely approximate taking into account network delays packet loss or even the application performance fluctuation <coughs> From the paper, uh, the best values that where you can decide, okay, this node should should be marked as down is usually between eight and twelve. But this uh, this is usually a trade-off that uh, you need to make between uh, how quick you detect failures and how how much accuracy you want. You can even go lower than than these values depending on your particular use case. So it's usually good to to experiment and a note to um, those people familiar with uh, distributed system failure mode i think here we are talking about fail stop uh, not talking about things like byzantine failure where you have a node that is lying about uh, its state probably that has a node that has been hacked we are not talking about here we consider all our nodes are genuinely reporting what they should uh, working properly and if they are not working it's it just mean they are they are dead so this is the kind of failure where we are talking we are dealing with here so uh <coughs> in, in schema this is how how we, we could draw it so this green is uh like <coughs> the the window the heartbeat interval window we we care about and these values are like these bars represent the interval uh, between the last uh, uh, the last um, reported heartbeats and uh, the currently reporting heartbeat so these are the intervals that we have dropped and this is the one these are the ones that we currently consider and that's inside this window so the five value will be uh, this value the time elapsed since last heartbeat that is this last value divided by, by the mean of heartbeat interval the mean of everything we have inside this this window <coughs> so what do we have so far we we have a nice way of managing a cluster state in which nodes can read any other node state and nodes are restricted to writing only to their own states we also have included a better failure detector detection mechanism that makes into that takes into account network and application performance fluctuation but implementing academic papers is one thing however uh, having them run in real world is uh, another concern there is always room for optimization refinement there are practical requirements mostly specific to uh, the use case you are dealing with and that are usually not addressed in the paper these issues if not handled with care can quickly end us up with a brand new algorithm and then you end up claiming that uh, you implement this paper but when they open your code base and uh, it looks quite different and sometimes it's even looks like um, 
uh, different uh, different algorithms so we need to be careful in that and in that regard we kind of build scuttlebot uh, uh, implemented scuttlebot to integrate it with quickwit so some of our practical requirement included we wanted when a node is starting it starts with a fresh local state like really fresh and we also don't want uh, an old state from a previous existing node overwriting a new state like when a node uh, is dead and then we restart it we reincarnate it it usually comes with a fresh new state however we because a previous state was uh, still lying around we don't want that previous state to to be uh, to overwrite the the new state we really want the new state to be considered as the one new and all uh, nodes within the cluster to note that okay this is the real new state even though that old state might have a higher version than the, the new one we want to to be able to to to, to really consider that new state as the, the the one that that we want to run with also uh, quickwit is a product that we intend to run uh, in al almost every environment and in environment in some environments such as um, kubernetes you might not know the public address of the node so we want also uh, a node to be able to advertise its public gossip address that is <coughs> the address at which all other nodes should gossip should be talking to it like those sin sin arc message i was discussing previously where that on, on which network interface they should be exchanging those so a node to be a, a node needs to be aware of this public go gossip address and share that with others so others can exchange message uh, with it. Okay, I think I will need to stop here and then I have a qu I can see a question in um, uh, in the chat. Uh, it says you uh, you said scuttlebot is slower than swim do you have an idea of of the the difference uh on top of my head uh no the, the the kind of difference i i just was talking about was the way the um uh, the rumor is spread obviously if you have a slow number of nodes the difference does not make much but if you have like hundreds of nodes and then for each gossip round like every second you have to pick um you have to pick two or three nodes out of it to spread the message before the cluster gets to note uh, the hundred nodes cluster gets to note the information you might be five or ten seconds down whereas if you you have <coughs> uh, you are doing with swim uh, where uh, a node needs to inform all this neighbor about what is happening a particular node can have five neighbors and then the next uh, already that covers up the the five node you selected from from scuttlebot side and then those five <coughs> nodes also can have five or six neighbors so you kind of uh, it, it's this is more like exponentially uh, sending messages to to, or to spreading the uh, the information i think there was another question which i'm scanning uh, Discord channel question from what is the heartbeat in Cassandra? Yes, the heartbeat in Cassandra is uh, one second, and currently we are also doing one second. But there is probably a discussion that w it really boils down to uh, how our experiments that we we might decide to run something lower lower than that, and uh, probably we also might decide to even make it uh, configurable depending on so, so that we give the end user the ability to to tweak it uh, I think I also need to check on uh, discord probably there might be a few questions yes so yes again thanks uh, Adrian we are almost using all the default values for Cassandra as of now and uh, depending on the experiment we can we can tweak it uh, for how I need so uh, that was it for the question session I think I'm going to resume on this uh, so I was saying uh, these are our requirements that uh, we kind of need to advertise for a node a public uh, a public address 
and we also want to do caching because we are doing distributed search we want when a node dies and it comes back online we want it to retain its place within uh, the the structure the overall hierarchy so probably it had some data that was cached we also want to we just don't want to throw them away because we are pulling from s3 even though it's cheap but it's always good for performance and other stuff to have to reuse whatever we we already had so our solution uh, consists of making few trade-offs while we resist from adding more stuff to our scuttlebot uh, implementation and uh, trying to make it not so different from scuttlebot itself so uh, we make the first of all what we decided was to make the attributes uh, which represent a node unique identifier in the cluster dynamic on every run that is uh, for a particular run of a node it will get an id but that id might will change whenever you rerun the, uh, the node again you stop and rerun the node again and we make the gossip public address uh, uh, required uh, configuration uh, you can set it via a uh, config item or an environment because we found out that uh, kubernetes uh, uh, has the the ability to to be able to map uh, runtime values to to environment variables so we can extract easily from from there and also uh, to solve the caching what we decided is even though the id is going to be uh, generated uh, uh, is going to be dynamic on every run but we there is nothing that stop us from making part of the that id static so we can extract it and use it for for our caching or for our identification purpose for that specific node inside our cluster hierarchy so uh, this then uh, gave us something like this the the, the id uh, is then the id the ID is then uh, comprised of node uh, unique ID and node generation. Node unique ID is then like a static unique ID that you give to you know your node uh, during configuration. It can be a name or even a tag if you want. And, and then you have the node generation which is a monotonically increasing value. Cassandra also uses uh, a timestamp for it, so we also do the same. But for our particular case, we do we do use timestamp because we want to keep our node uh, stateless. We don't want to be saving something somewhere and then re-incrementing it anytime we restart the node. And so, so we we use timestamp was uh, a good a good thing to use in that case. So this. Uh, solution avoid us a lot of issues to deal with uh, right now there is no extra measure needed to avoid old state from overriding new state because as you start with a new a new id uh, you start a node with always a new id then the new id always comes up with a new state to inside the cluster and how a scuttlebot implementation stays really close to the paper and also using the timestamp as i was saying as generation number in quickwit keep the node stateless however there are some couple of uh, issues that comes with it uh, obviously with a timestamp uh, time dr uh, clock can drift or you might end up with a node that has that doesn't have the the correct time probably way back a uh, wave in front in the future and then one day you decide to reset your your clock and there is still that probability, even though very rare, that uh, the, the timestamp that was used uh, when the, uh, your node clock was uh, ahead, that one of those timestamps can be used. It is very rare because we use millisecond, but it's that probability still exists. But this is something that we don't really consider as uh, prominent to deal with right now. And then there are other means you can also deal with, like if you happen to have a node that you you have resetted the, the clock back and in time you can just decide to to modify the node id probably add, adding something uh, on top of the previous id you had like a tag or a version that can easily solve the problem but nodes that um if we employed uh, 
um, a different technique of node generation that is based on on something on, on an integer we store somewhere and restore every time this has there is no problem in 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 that regard in dealing with those but this is something to be aware of and even cassandra ha has to to deal with uh, by guarding when a node is starting making sure the timestamp does not uh, go far beyond the, when the node is starting the timestamp or uh, the time the clock i mean sorry the clock on the node is not far ahead or far behind with it is really within a good range for for an acceptable range um talking i think we have a question that is talking about uh, ks operation can a node detect that it lost membership fell behind uh, to fail its readiness probe uh, i'm not sure i quite understand but uh well, what you mean by fell behind or to fail its readiness probe uh, but in inside how uh, how cluster membership implementation uh, when a node is down on itself yes it is already uh, the others will notice that it is down uh, if if it has uh, it has lost uh, connection with with others obvious obviously you don't have uh, you you can have just the the data uh, I mean the cluster, the previous cluster state you you had, but now when we start using uh, that data inside uh, QuickWit itself, this is when we note we can notice that oh this uh, this particular node probably doesn't have the the correct update because you always when we do for instance uh, distributed search we have uh, we select a couple of nodes that we need them to do the job so if one of them uh, fail we can investigate if one of them fail to uh, to to do the job that is assigned to probably because it has uh, stale data about the cluster then we just need to pick some something else so at the end of the day the node itself might not notice that it has uh, stale information at at the right time but uh once when we are using that that node we we know that we we not we will notice obviously that that node has stale data and we will switch back to to another node and if that node was just behind or was not ready because of um because of its own state its network failure or whatever uh, if it gets resolved, it will eventually get those the new state. Or if it doesn't get resolved, we will also notice it because uh, from a quick wit perspective, once we assign two or three jobs to that node, it is failing to do it. We will have the, the monitoring that will tell us, okay, this node definitely has issues that, that needs to be uh, de dealt with. So we will probably, we will already, will notice that yes this this node is is faulty uh, another question when a node crashes and restarts it gets a new id so the old node id is detected as down continuously yes so uh, this is these are the trade-off i was just about talking about so right now we don't garbage collect uh, old nodes and there is a plan to be able to to garbage collect it but it's kind of really a difficult problem why is this difficult because uh scuttlebot uh, kind of bounce back uh the the messages and this is when where i was talking about that if you are not careful for real world implementation you end up having something that is different from the paper and because scuttlebot kind of make uh, the information banks back and forth between nodes so what you end up with is if you decide to delete uh, a particular node state and immediately on node a and immediately node c uh, gossip with a it will notice that oh you don't have the deleted one so let me send you the deleted one so again you will see that immediately that node you just deleted resurrects so we kind of have to introduce probably a custom message or find other ways 
to be able to garbage collect it. So uh, the way you will find it in Cassandra is quite uh, uh, a bit complicated, uh, but it's really, I think it solves also the problem, but we find it complicated and we want to really think about how easily we can solve that problem. So Cassandra uses quarantine node. So when a node crashes, they kind of put it in quarantine for a few period before uh, trashing it off, before completely getting rid of. And they kind of make sure that quarantine nodes, even if they do hard bits, like their state are changed, they don't apply those do the state for, from those quarantine nodes. So this kind of like adding few more customization to what the paper described. But right now, yes, uh, Pascal, when a node uh, dies, the node uh, ID is just there. Or even if on purpose you shut down a node and then restart it, the old ID will be, the old ID and the old state will be there. But uh, right now that's not a big issue because we don't deal with a lot of data in the cluster. So this is not a big issue and to, to have them around. And we, we have a plan to, to be able to have a garbage collection to process them and remove them. And yes, just like um, Paul is saying in the in the chat, who are people who are viewing, it's not to, an entirely a brand new ID, as because part of it is um, uh, when a new re node restart, it's not really a brand new ID because part of it is uh, is still static, so we can use for uh, our cash cash requirement and and so on. So I think, yes, that last question was the thing I was about, I was trying to talk about. And I think uh, what I will say is I've talked uh, much. Let me show a bit of the code and probably next we will do a demo. Uh, unfortunately, the demo I will be doing is not the, uh, the ideal thing will have been to demo what we have uh, integrated already in uh, Scuttlebot in quick wit but uh, i i don't really feel uh, confident right now to to do a demo is still a mess so what the demo is going to be is the scuttlebot and and implementation of uh, how the nodes are used and their state so you can at least view what the state uh, is about uh, on a screen so let me switch up to uh yes the code then when you come in into the lib i hope my screen can be viewed uh right now let me just make sure yeah okay cool So yes, uh, these are the, the version values I was talking about. So for each key value pairs in Scuttlebot, you have the value and then you have the, the version inside it. And for Scuttlebot, you have the address that it needs to listen to. You have its own ID, like the currently running node ID, and then the Scuttlebot, uh, the cluster state that we have been talking about. And then you have a heartbeat counter and some uh, other details like the failure detector uh, and, and the live node watcher for event about a node going off or, or down. So if I come into the, the cluster state, you just have a mapping of, uh, you have a list of seed nodes. Seed nodes are like nodes that we really think are really important and, uh, 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 and most of the time are the most reliable when a node is start joining this is the one it needs to join so uh, a node state is like a mapping between the the node id and the, the node state so when you see the node state you just have a maximum heartbeat and then you have the key and the version value that that you want so uh, basically, one uh, when a scuttlebot uh, uh, cluster starts, a uh, node two nodes joins together. These are the states, uh, the, the the information, the state that they will be exchanging. Each one inside with his own, uh, uh, each one being able to modify his own uh, map or bitrate map, if you want to to say. So and to connect that to 
uh, we kind of do a custom serialization because we want the value to be as small as possible so you have a minimum uh, transmission unit to what i failed to to discuss about during the presentation is that uh, the the delta can be very big uh, and if the delta uh, is more than the minimum transmission unit we we truncate it but the good thing is uh, even if we truncate it, it means it has got half of the, the update and the next gossip round not um, uh, not necessarily with the same node but with another node will make sure that that difference gets resolved, that difference gets sent to, to him again. So you, you don't really have to, to worry about the, the data, all the data being sent. And for uh, network communication, we use for network communication we use a, a udp server um now for the last part i want to show is probably just how the the message uh, where we exchange the message so this is where we process the message as i was saying when a node this particular running node receives a sin message it has a digest so it used it computes its own digest and then it used that digest is received here to compute the, the delta and then this is where we also use that delta to report the heartbeat because first of all from the min the uh, from the the message the scene message we receive that delta inside that delta we have nodes that are indirectly not directly from this one so there is a direct heartbeat and there is an indirect heartbeat that we do here and we report to the failure detector the heartbeat and then we compose the the reply which is seen arc by sending the delta and the self the self digest so when the scene arc is received as well what we just do we report the the heartbeat and then we also apply the delta we receive we also compute another delta that we send to arc to the node to the second node and when that second node receives it just applies the delta and again we make sure we always do uh, we read always report the heartbeat so let me check i think there might be questions around uh, on youtube so uh, we have paul saying so detecting that node is down take four or five seconds so that a node yes so I'm trying to figure out uh, has it the heartbeat in Cassandra one second yes uh, so detecting that a node is down takes four to five seconds yes and it really depends also uh, on the number of nodes you have in the cluster the more you have node in the cluster definitely uh, it, the more it's going to take time for all the nodes to notice that a node ha ha are down because each one basically uh, work on 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 its own uh has his own process uh, his own detector and so so on so it depends on how often the, the the way we select the node and we send to them but usually it is inside this range it takes a few seconds to for a node to be able to to notice that so uh last thing i want to show is uh yes a demo of this running so i'm going to pick this and i'm going to run here as i'm going to run the uh, how our scuttlebot node one as 10,000 on port 10,000 and once it start running i'm going to start another one here 11000 and i'm going to specify the seed as the first node i just started running and once they start communicating you you can see this bunch of a log of reporting heartbeat and the node id that is reporting heartbeat and i'm going to run a second that is 12 and then also consider the first node as the seed and i'm going to run the next one 13 also then as the seed and i think uh this should be okay for us so if you can see here i uh, i check on uh, on the rest uh server 
uh, you can see uh, what the cluster is made about and you can see uh, the live node from the perspective of node 10,000 you have three three live nodes the first one is 13 here the second one is 11 and the third one is uh, 12 is running on port 12 and if you come here on node state you can already notice that the key values and the heartbeat and these uh, heartbeat value increase as well as the uh, the version so if i refresh you can see that you you have uh, this one and obviously the first uh, this node 10,000 started without any seed so you don't have a seed here so if i take 11 which started with a seed of 10,000 you have the seed node so now let's uh, see we have uh, a cluster of four nodes and let's take a look at uh, if we can shut down this particular one this is 13 so i stop 13 and probably this is uh, the the time we stop it at uh, and if we come here we already have detected just two seconds because the number of node is very small a few seconds later we already have noticed that uh, 13 is now part of the uh, of these dead node so if i go ahead and restart it back yes 13 i'm just making sure uh, and then i restore it and you can see instantly this node has also been uh, detected as live it's it's back online uh, yes this is very quick because we don't have and I'm also working all of these nodes on the same on the same computer. So yes, I think uh, that's just what I kind of feel like I have for you today. Uh, let's let us check if there are still questions about uh, the demo or okay. Yes, uh, I'm checking on uh yes so right now we don't have question but yes i do have and by the way i feel like <laughs> i hope the the demo gods were with us and <laughs> we we didn't have a crash an unexpected crash so yes and a few last question if you have uh, otherwise i'm the one saying thank you for for attending and it I can see a uh, few people still typing, so I don't think I. What should we use for readiness probe in a Kubernetes cluster? Okay. Uh, yes, Francois, I think uh, that's abs that's also correct. But if we want uh, for a node that is ready, as we end up using them in QuickWit, I think uh, if I have a job and I assign a job to to a node, it should be able to to just respond it. But I think this is still something we we need to to discuss around. But uh, to my perspective, when a node just uh, is part now of the live node cluster and then i can directly ask him to to perform a job and if it is it fails to do two or three job uh, i already i always have the reason why it, do, it did so and i should be able to to notice that or oh, this one i should not trust him anymore I, I i should probably investigate that's the the way i think about it so i think uh, i will stop here uh with the stream thank you everyone for for attending and we also expect your quick uh, your honest feedback on on the same channel uh how we can improve the presentation format if the demo was short or if you really wanted us to go deeply in 
in in the code or if you kind of expect to have more session like this um, going through the code probably that can help contributors coming in to to help us uh, move uh, quick with forward uh, that will be great so we we kind of expect your your feedback in that regard on our discord channel thank you everyone